everybody. Welcome to Hey Man, I'm John. I am Jacob. Hey man, nice, hey man. To, nice to have you back this week. Thanks for having me back or being back. Take two. Great to be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You you still have a cold? Or? Yeah, I still got a little something. We came back from San Fran and both Iman and I have had like a, a tickle in the throat and uh, some sniffles since we got back. Yeah. So, and it's been pretty consistent all the way through. Like we, it's very highs and lows. Um, but yeah, I'm here. We're good. I'm feeling better. All right. Perfect. I'm excited for our, our weekend this weekend. Well, what a great weekend. First of all, let's start off with some business. Um, well, this past week we were in Huntsville, Alabama and in Hotlanta. Mm -hmm. What three phenomenal nights. Um, it, I just have to say you guys, the energy you're bringing again, so amazing. So thank you all so much for coming out and, uh, just packing those shows out. Absolutely. So much fun. So much fun talking to everybody in the meet and greets. Um, I had such a fun mushroom night on Friday and then microdosed some acid, but ended up macro dosing a little somewhere in between a micro and a macro. Uh, I mean, look again, you go on a scale of like, if you put it right in the middle, if like you're on the other side of the middle line, Closer to macro than you were micro for sure. I definitely was. Because, yeah, yeah, that was hilarious to me. Because, look, if you know him, if you know my dad and how when he talks about his drug escapades, right? He's not, you're not the kind of guy who just dips his toe in. No. Like, like you're not, like, like, if you had what that, like, you know, what was given to you and you'd had it in your possession. I don't I, know what you mean, what was given to me. The acid, the microdose, like oh, in the oh, spray yeah. bottle. So, so, guys. Um, I had a spray bottle, which is acid in water, basically, right? Well, no, it was liquid acid. Yeah, but no, it's oh, it was diluted. Di diluted. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's diluted, and so you just do a couple pumps. Um, but like, the time. yeah, and but like, had you had that in your possession and it was yours, I think you would go through your day hitting it like a breath spray. Oh, it's about to be mine. I ordered, uh, I just ordered three, dude. You doing that was so funny because you were like, ah, I'll just start with two. And then I hear you go one, and then you went, pss, pss, and I went, you tried to sneak that past me, you little <laughs> shit. I was like, you don't think I heard the third spray? Are you kidding me? Yeah, but those three sprays weren't enough. <laughs> yeah, and then you were like, yeah, well, we'll just hit me with one more spray. And then again, I heard the, tss, I heard the quick second one. <laughs> and I was like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah, uh, let me got there, and I needed to grab a couple more sprays. Yeah, he hit me with another, another sneaky double spray right there. And so you ended up at seven sprays yeah. by the end of the day when it was recommended for you to only do three. Yeah, I mean, look, dude, I was definitely a little high. Uh, but <laughs> So was, much energy. It was a ton of fun. I love acid. We As, were, acid's great. Yeah, it was a good time. Uh, but, but, uh, but Huntsville and Atlanta were amazing. Thank you all so much. I'm going to tell you something right now. It, it, even though I filmed this hour in January, you know, the new hour I'm doing is maybe better already than the hour I just filmed. Dude, I told you, I think after every show this weekend, even last night's show on our Monday night at Kimmel's, we were walking down the stairs and I was like, hey, you murdered. Yeah. Like that you, it's been, even since the special, you've just been. Something clicked after yeah. the special, not, not clicked something that I had forgotten um, and kind of had let go of a little bit over the last six months is back. So, yeah, but so much fun guys this week, Spokane sold out, Missoula sold out, still some tickets left for Seattle on Friday night. That is the eighth. The following week we're in Dallas. Um, y'all better show up for Dallas. It's going to be the weekend right before my birthday. So come, come 14, 15, 16, come party. It's weekend gonna be after that in Nashville, which is 21st, 22nd, 23rd. Mm -hmm. And we have some amazing podcasts lined up when we're down there. We are going to interview Caroline Bryan. We are going to interview bunny mm -hmm. and we are, uh, going to interview Karen Fairchild. Um, and these are just like huge fucking such amazing women. And I can't talk to them. I wait to talk to them about their, the way they grew up and the way they parent and all that stuff. But they're also so funny and so successful and so interesting. Uh, I can't wait. And all so different. So yeah. super excited to do that. And the shows, the shows in Nashville. The shows Let's in not Nashville, forget about guys. the shows. Uh, if you're, if you're in Nashville or you're traveling, I would get those tickets. Now those shows always sell out and they are always uh, packed with special. These shows appearances. are going to be bananas. These so, shows are going to be bananas. For sure. Come through. 
Uh, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. Uh, but uh, that's it. And also, everybody, thank you so much for listening to the podcast, the olds and the news. Um, so many amazing comments, and we're making so many amazing connections. Yeah. Um, it's so cool to get your messages about how you and your parents or you and your kids listen to the podcast together or that uh, a podcast, you know, you're a grown human and your podcast that we did, um, reminded you of something and made you reach out to either your parent or your kid. This is the kind of stuff that, um, that the, the reason we're, one of the reasons we're doing this podcast. Yeah. So to help, it's, it's super cool. And so comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. Uh, if you guys are enjoying the podcast, make sure you tell the motherfucker. And do I have anything else to share? I think that's it. I think you covered all of it. I think that's, you, you handled the business well. Okay. What do you got? Um, uh, yeah. Okay. What do you want to do for your birthday? His birthday is March 17th. Everybody. My, my birthday is St. Patrick's day, which by the way, I just thought about that Sunday night on the strip. It is going to be a uh, jumping. Yeah, I bet you. Yeah, and also mid March Madness, it's gonna be nuts. I just realized that. Is it mid March Madness? I don't. Think, I think March Madness is the second. Oh, it's dude, the second week. The it. first time we ever came to Vegas for my 14th birthday, we stayed at Mandalay Bay. It was mid March Madness. Yeah, when we were when we were in there and eating dinner and like all that shit. Yo, dude, that so, was that trip was a lot of fun. That trip was dope. Yeah, that, that was trip really was cool. a lot of fun. That and then I never came back to Vegas until I turned 21. Is that right? Well, why would you? That's the thing. It was like, there was just no point for me to come back. Yeah. Plus, I had been kicked out of the go-kart place, so there was no reason for me to come you back. You did get kicked out of the <laughs> go-kart place. It was, okay, hold on. Let me get on this man's bullshit real quick. Not him. It was not my dad's fault I got kicked out. And, yeah, and like, why would it be my fault you got kicked out? Because we're very competitive. Yeah, but that you were just a shittier driver. No, no. I was actually a really... Okay, hold on. You stop it over there, okay? Look, this is what happened. We went to this go-kart place, and I was driving around, and... When I when I'm driving go karts, like I like to drive, I like to try and really whip it around those corners. Like I'm I'm not playing it safe. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Go karts are not to play it safe. There's no, nah, you're not going fast enough to really do any demand. Correct, right? So I'm hitting these corners kind of fast and not playing bumper carts with the rest of the people, but I'm definitely the antagonist on the go kart track. Yeah, I always have been, and I know you know this because remember when we uh, those NASCAR just racing games in arcades? Yeah. Do you remember watching me play those when I was a kid? Not really. Okay. This was my play style. My play style, at the end of every race, I would get a badge that was a devil horn because I would just drive around running into people and moving them off of the off of the track. So, so you I, were not popular. No, so that I could win the race. Is that better or worse than being a button masher? Button masher is the worst thing you could ever ask for. Yeah, I button love being a button masher. Oh, it's my least favorite thing. I love it. I hate it. It's, it's awful. But so I, I'm not a menace on the... Uh -huh. Go-kart track, you know? Uh -huh. But like I said, I'm, I'm the antagonist, for sure. Okay. And so I was hitting these corners and kind of driving a little crazy. And I hit one corner and this dude, the guy flagged me down. He gave me a green flag. He goes, hey, I need you to slow down a little bit. I remember that. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll slow down a little bit. He's like, just on the turns. He goes, everything else is cool. Just slow down a little bit on the turns. I go, okay, cool. And I do that. And I start to slow down a little bit on the turns. And then on, on one of those turns, of about three minutes later, I get rear-ended. Because this other dude is going too fast on the turns. Which yeah. is what I just got told to slow down for. Dude flags me down. Hey, you're going too slow on the turns. I'm going to need you to speed up. And I was like, you got to pick one, dude. But I'm like, I don't, you're telling a 14-year-old to slow down and then go faster. You can't. Yeah, that's Help me. Do. Somewhere in the middle. Like, yeah. you got to give me a better word. For sure. And so then I start speeding up again. Sorry. And I feel, and I, I, I miss the brake pedal going over a turn. And... I hit the gas again, trying to turn, and I run straight into the tire wall. I remember you drove straight into that. Straight into the tire wall. And the dude just walked right up to me, and tell, he's like, give me your helmet, get out of the cart. And I was like, you don't want me to just at least move it so it's safe? He goes, you're obviously not safe driving this go-kart, so you're going to have to leave. And I was like, what? Yeah, you get banned from that go-kart. I was doing fine until he told me to slow down. And, and then, then he speed up. And then speed up. And then slow down. Dude fucked with my head. It was not good. That was not my fault. Okay. I blame that dude. Yeah, but you ultimately drove into the wall. I, I okay. I accidentally missed the brake pedal. It happens. Liz, does it? Yeah, it doesn't happen to me on the road. It just happens to me at a go-kart place. M missing the brake happens? Well, no, like Can I would imagine saying that as a result. Yo, dude, I was uh, you ran into that car in front of you. I missed the brake. It happens. What do you that's, mean? I missed that's the brake. 
it You've never heard of that sometimes where someone goes to try and hit the brake and they accidentally hit the gas? I've never done that in my car. I've never heard of anybody under the age of 90 doing that. Under the age of 90? Oh, yeah, dude, nobody under the age of 90 thinks they're hitting the brake and hits the gas. Here, I'm going to tell you one thing right now. If you're over 80, you shouldn't be driving a vehicle. I agree with that. I I actually here, let me just say this. If I was going to run for office, okay, here are the things that I would run on. After the age of 75, you take a driver's test. Oh, I'm way earlier on that. Every year. Not me, because I know both my parents were good at 75. So yeah, but that doesn't mean everybody else is good at 75. I agree. But after the age of 75, I say you got to take a driving test every year. I say, I would say this also. There, and I've said this before, that every airline should have two or three dedicated nobody under the age of 12 flights. Every single... Just to give the people an option. Now, you might have to charge more for that. Yeah. But I might pay a little more. I, I think, honestly, I think I saw a little, an I, article late last year of an airline I, trying it. I did see that. I don't remember which one. But I don't either. I definitely think that is a thing. I'd Here, pay for that. Here's another thing I say. I, I, I kind of like, if you're going, like, if that's like a flight that's a little extra money, but you're going on like a nice vacation and you want to really start it off real nice and yep. that plane ride, you want it to be smooth. I'd pay extra money for that. Me too. Like, oh. A hundred percent. Then again, I can sleep through anything. So if you have a screaming kid on your flight and I have noise canceling headphones, I'm winning. But I know that's not the case for everybody else. Yeah. But also, I've had a screaming kid next to me. Soundproof headphones don't do shit for that. You no, know what I mean? no, of course not. Like, of course not. Of course not. Yeah. So I would he, pay for that. Like hundred percent. Here's another thing that I would do. Uh, I would say every other weekend is a long weekend. Okay. I I don't think the problem is it, I, I just think every other weekend a long weekend. I think a, I, in America I think we work to live, or live to work. Yeah. And I I think it's backwards. I think everybody needs a little more time off. Look, man, they're doing all right in Europe. They take siestas in the yeah. middle of the fucking day. Well, you, did you see the UK? Just like there are certain companies in the UK that again late last year switched to four day work weeks. This is every, every, all week, yeah. four day work week, this every is, week. Yeah. And then, and studies have just came back. Like it literally just showed up a couple weeks ago again in my feed. And it was like, studies have shown that work rate is up. Mor workplace morale is up. hundred percent. Like everything is up. I am because, a firm believer yeah. that you are a better worker when you're happy. Yeah. That being said, the other thing I'm running for office on getting rid of daylight savings. Thank it, you. It's just whatever fucking time it is, everybody. Thank you. That's what time it is. Thank you. For everybody. We're not an agriculturally driven society anymore. Yep. We don't need that shit. I'm with that. Uh, I go back. I said this a couple episodes ago, but I had this in. Everybody in their car gets to tap one other car once a year. Now, see, but that, again, hold on. You can't, like, I, I poked holes in that last time. You we did not here. poke holes in that. I did. You did not. Everybody gets one bump. Yeah. But does that mean everybody can only be bumped once? No, nah, you can be bumped about a million times. Okay, so that means the whole entire world or country could go after one singular person and bump them enough times in their car. Yeah, but just don't drive like an asshole. Okay. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. I feel like it would just turn into chaos because everybody e would go target one person. Even or I don't people. think so. I think so. I think maybe the first year they might. But you know why I think they wouldn't? You don't want to waste your bump on somebody who's not bothering you. Because somewhere four months later, you're going to be like, oh, I wish I could bump that fucking dude right now. Yeah, but I have one of those every month, dude. Like, you just got to pick one. Yeah. And so, like, at that point in time, it just yeah. becomes like you pick your poison at a certain point. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, so I, and the last thing I would say, yes. Also, how hard of a bump are we talking? Bump. Tap. Like a, like, like what happened to, okay, yeah, like, like a tiny, just like a little accidental bump. Yeah, like you, just rolled, rolled. Frink. Okay. Yeah. What was that? Yeah, that's the noise it's gonna make. Frink. I don't think so. Bink. That's better. Bump. Sure. Dink. Why is it so high pitched? Uh, because it's it's ten on ten. Dink. Ten on ten was my nickname in high school. I don't know why. I don't either. Uh, I, just, I just thought ten and ten on ten sounded like something cool. I just couldn't figure out what it would be cool for. The the last thing that I would say is. I am putting the word retarded back into the vernacular. 
<laughs> just can't, can't, I can't be penalized for a word that's an actual word. It's not a slang. It's not a slang. It's not, I'll use the Jewish slangs because I'm Jewish and, and people seem to be okay with you making slangs. So it's not like you're calling someone a Jaime or a kike or anything like that. Uh. It's the word retarded, which is a real word. Putting it back in the vernacular, everybody can't. You know the word I wish. You know what I, I think, wish. I think everything else was good, and I think you lost a lot of people in the last. I don't think so. I think I actually got more people. I don't think you got more people, but I think you got the same people. I don't because here's the thing. I'm not saying that we should be able to call someone a retard. Right. That's where if you're gonna be insulted. That's it because you're putting a negative connotation on it. But if I like that dude at the show the other night who I thought was retarded, th there's nothing <laughs> wrong with me saying, oh, I thought he was retarded because that's a real word. Yeah. Okay. So Fair I, enough. I'm, I'm going to say we get to put that back in and use it. Can I tell you the, the word growing up that I really wish that I'd be able to use again? Oh, we've talked about this. I know exactly what it is. Gaylord. Yep. Gaylord is just the funniest. Oh, you Gaylord. <laughs> Is so, <laughs> it's such, and by the way, look at the shirt I'm wearing. I know, like, I know, I noticed when you walked up. Yeah. Dude, are you in your Lululemon pants too? I am not in my Lululemon pants. I'm in my, the same pants you're in, except for black. Oh, nice. Oh yeah. I went full, full sweatsuit. So, but, but Gaylord to me is like, ah, you fucking Gaylord. It's not even like, it, it doesn't even make sense because no. Gaylord isn't like a real thing. Yeah. But gay, gay, it was, I was so, I was talking to a friend of mine uh, who I grew up with and I was like, man, I wish we could say Gaylord. He, <laughs> I say it all the time. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm bringing it back. Do it. Gaylord. Sure. Oh, you, I mean, what if I was like, Ugh, look at that Gaylord. <laughs> Does Maybe. Gaylord bother you? No, Gaylord doesn't bother me. I think when you use it as look at that Gaylord, different, but I think when you're using, using it like with your friends. Well, here's the thing too, because I think, I think you think people will think that I I'm using gay Lord as a term. Like if I was talking about somebody who was gay, right? That's not it. So I you, wouldn't you, see a gay guy and be like, look at that gay. Lord. You actually use it as a, towards only straight people. Yes. And it, <coughs> it's not, a, it's not a connotation for somebody who is gay. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I, you know, we used it a lot, a lot. I know you did. We use it a lot. Yeah. Back to your driving thing for if you became president. Yeah. Yeah. Mine starts way earlier than that. For the driving, mine is once you turn 50, take a driving test. Dude, I'm 50. You're 54. You think I should be taking a driving? I'm a better driver than you. Cap. What? Huh? We've talked about this. You know what cap means? Cap means you're lying. Oh. Put a cap on the line. I, yeah. I, there's, no, there's no way you think you're a better driver. I definitely am. What? How many, fine, how, how, how many accidents have you been in? That were my fault? Yeah. One. What? One. Which one? The one where I drove into a tree. Oh. But I've, in my defense, I was chasing... Okay. <laughs> I, okay. Hold on. The way you started that, there's only one way this sentence ends where it's a good reason for you to be chasing someone. Tell me. Is if you're trying to, like, get something back that was stolen from you, or you were trying, like, he, somebody stole something from an old woman, like that old Spider-Man... And All right. you wouldn't chase them down. I have a better one than that. Was it a good deed, at I, least? Nah, I was in high school. No, oh, it's not a good reason, then. We, we had graduated. We were at a graduation party. And there were these two girls. In my hometown, there was a place called Puffer's Pond. <laughs> that It was just a pond, but it had a cliff. Why, why Puffer? Is it in a city called Puffer? No, I forget why it was called Puffer's Pond. But it was, there was a sign that said Puffer's Pond. There was probably somebody Mr. Puffer or John Puffer or uh -huh. Tommy Puffer. It wasn't because people were smoking weed there. Oh, that's not what I was oh, thinking either. Because of, what, was, was it a spot where the, the kids went to go have intercourse? I know because it was a cliff and a pond. Yeah, okay. Fair but, but it was like an open, and so and it was probably a 20-foot, uh, you know, it's, there were some people I grew up with who listened to this podcast. So if you, if you guys remember how tall Puffers was, but it had to be 17, 20 feet. How deep was the pond? Uh, deep enough where you could jump. Right? Like ponds aren't that deep. This one must have been. <laughs> and so we we would jump off Puffer's Pond. And why was I talking about Puffer's Pond? You crashed your, crashed your car. Oh, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> that's uh, how Josh Wolf's brain works. <laughs> I, um, we're at a party and I was with my buddy. And he, these two girls were like, hey, we're going to Puffer's Pond. You guys want to come? 
And um, we were like, yeah. And they were like, well, we're going to be skinny dip. And we were like, yeah, we're definitely coming. And they were like, we'll meet you there. And I said, okay. So they took off like two minutes. And I said to my friend, Greg, let's get there before him and scare the fuck out. <laughs> and he was like, that's a great idea. So, so why? Be, why? I, here, this whole, can I explain how that looks in my head? Yeah. Two girls just invited you to go skinny dipping at a pond. Yeah. You guys said, great. And then you let them go first. And then you decide two minutes later to beat them there and scare the shit out of them. Yeah, You're scaring it. the pussy away. No, dude. It, in high school, that's, that's what my thought is. It's like, if I scare them, the sex is gone. Like, no, what, what is happening here? They're, 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 we're all going to laugh. We're not going to scare them like they're going to get murdered. We're, we're all going to laugh, and then they're gonna, we're going to chuckle, and then we're all going to skinny dip, and then there's the sex. That's not how my brain works. Well, listen, dude. So that was how my brain worked in high school. But By the way, what, you, what you been watching this entire I'm time? I'm not watching. I'm trying to download. Are you trying to post something? Post something, but I don't know if it posts. Oh, yeah, it did post. Um, okay, so, <laughs> um, so we get in the car. This was my station wagon, dude. Now, I fucking love this station wagon. The station wagon was four on the floor, dude. It was a stick shift station wagon, and we it was a Plymouth... K car, I think. And you could, it was, you could lay the fucking greatest tracks in this station wagon. So I got my buddy and I, we're in this car and we're, we come to a V in the road and I, I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to stay to the right and then go up to the left a little further up. Then I was like, no, no, no. I really think I can make more time if I fucking voot off to the left. And I went a little too late and I missed the road Oof. and I hit the grass and there was a big gunk. Yeah. Right. So it went gunk and the car went up in the air. And when I landed, I was from me to that wall from a tree. Oh yeah. You're not dodging that. No, dude. And it hit when, you know, the Massachusetts license plate, well, I think six digits. So three, three and a dash. Yeah. It hit the dash. It was the middle. Oof. And we, uh, neither one of us had seatbelts. So you saw where our heads hit the windshield. Oof. It, but, uh, we hit the windshields probably because when I landed, I wasn't in my seatbelt. I went up when I landed, I scooted over. So I wasn't even at the wheel. Oh, your heads were close together. So close together. And not being in front of the wheel probably saved me. Yeah. Um, but we went flat, right? And we both ended up on the opposite ends of the car. Uh, opposite side of the car because I got out driver, he got out uh -huh. um, passenger. The car, the music was playing. Creepy. Dude. Try a little tenderness was playing. Ooh, she may be weary. <laughs> Young girls, they do get weary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That was uh, terribly out of tune. Sorry, everybody. And my buddy was going to a place called Norwich Academy, which is in Vermont to play football, but his shoulder was fucked up. And my, you know who the EMT was that showed up? Who? My youth league football coach. What? Yeah. This dude named it's random Roland. I forget. Um, and he showed up. He called me a dumb fuck right to my face. As he should have. He goes, Hey, you dumb fuck. <laughs> and then when they looked at the car, when you went back and looked at the car, and when we brought the car in to the junkyard, when we went to look at it, the guy at the junkyard was like, oh, we were stunned to hear that anybody survived this crash. Jesus. Stunned to hear that anybody survived this crash. Jeez. And the head marks were so close together. So I have a scar that goes from here. To, it stops right before my eye because the hat I was wearing at the time dropped down over my eye. The visor was cut. But my eye was safe. So let me get this straight. Just in, a, in layman's terms. But, yeah, okay. Everything that needed to go right did. Uh, besides for, hitting the tree. That's what I mean. <laughs> like it was your best case scenario for your Cross worst case scenario. That's crazy. There's no reason that both of us hit our heads on this windshield. We didn't touch heads. There's no reason that we didn't. Did you break through the windshield? Um, he broke through a little bit. We didn't go through it though. That's his crazy. head broke through a little bit. Right, right, right. Uh, so he had some more cuts and probably stuff shit on his head. He had cuts on his head. My ankle was like pretty much 
it was dislocated and like under my under my foot. Oof. Um, my shoulder was a little fucked up. So I go to the hospital and the, you're going to love this Tom Wolf story. I was, can I be honest? I've been waiting for you to get to the part where Tom Wolf comes and finds you in the hospital. My so part. my dad was on a business trip. So they get, you get it. When you get a call from the hospital or from the police, they can't tell you if the person's okay or not. They're not allowed to give you. They're just going to say, they just say, Hey, is this Ellen Wolf? My mom's name. It is. Your son, Josh, was involved in a car accident. He's being taken to the hospital. We suggest you come down right now. They, they don't have the liberty to tell you? Not allowed. Because they can't diagnose. What if they say he's fine and then something goes bad and I die? That's a good point. You're going to get sued like crazy. Yeah, so you can't, you can't do any of that. So my, I think Dan was at home. Um, and so my mom was like, Dan, you're driving me to the hospital. Jonathan, you stay here. Call your dad. Oof. So, John, John, we had two cars. We had the station wagon and we had my dad's car. Mm -hmm. Now, we were poor growing up, dude. We, for many years, we didn't have a car. Right. Right. And we rode the public transportation. And if we needed to go shopping, we borrowed our neighbor's car down the street. But the neighbor made us clean his house to use his car. Rude. Okay. So rude. Yo, know, I grew up. Yeah, I don't know if they still have this. Matt, you know what I'm talking about? Like, I just had potato chips that just, it was a white bag with red, black letters that just said chips. And like, just a white box that just said crackers on it. Like, it was bottom of the barrel stuff, right? Huh. We used to shop at this place called Price Chopper. And, um, exactly. Hi yeah. So, my dad, when he got a job, because he was, I think he mentioned he was employed, but not really yeah, making yeah, any yeah. money. He did say that. And I think my mom was making something like seventeen or twenty-seven thousand dollars a year. Okay. For to feed four six four teenage boys. So when he got a job, they bought what we thought was the fanciest car in the world, dude. A Honda Accord. Nice. Dude, when he got this Accord, we were like, this is the fanciest fucking car. <laughs> I have ever seen. It wasn't, I think it might have been an automatic even. We were like, God damn, automatic Honda. Let's go, you know? <laughs> and so it was the fancy car, man. And in general, we weren't allowed to, we weren't driving the fancy car. Right. That's why we bought the station wagon. So my, Jonathan calls Tom Wolf and goes, hey, Josh has been in a car accident. And mom's on her way to the hospital to see him and my dad goes which car was he driving <laughs> <laughs> that is he okay how bad was the accident <laughs> when, did well, he fuck up the car I've been working my whole life to buy <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's the right attitude in all honesty I yeah, like that it's funny but I got to that hospital dude you know and they had to get because they had to scrape the glass out of my face and my forehead and my eye. Yeah. So they had to give me a pain shot right here. Ah! Oh. In basically my eye. Ah! Yeah, it was... Why? It was rough. Oh, that is the... Oh, my God. I did not need to hear that. I can... I'm going to try and match that pain. You want to hear the worst part about it? It didn't work? No! Some other dudes went to Puffer's Pond and had sex with these girls. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what the fuck? Yeah. I don't even get a sympathy vagina. Nope. I don't get any of that. I'm going to tell you right now, that's the exact reason why I'm a better driver than you. Because I'm not risking my life for pussy. I wasn't risking my life. <laughs> Dude, based on that story and how fast you were driving, yeah. based on my estimation... Life was at risk the, but for it was, vagina. It was a different time, dude. Like, you guys are so much more measured. and and Well, but also, we have phones that can take pictures. Yeah, we don't have that. Or didn't have that. And you have Uber, which is huge, dude. True, true. Or if you can't afford that, we have those little the bird scooters. Bird scooters. There's so ding, many. Ding. Uh, dude, I, I didn't have any of that shit. We walked everywhere. You know, we rode in my town, which was really cool, actually. It was, there was free. I grew up in Amherst, Mass. There was free public transportation. Oh, sick. Free, dude, that basically ran from five in the morning to one in the morning. 
That's dope. It was, that should be a thing. Dude, it was so cool. But you, so, and, and your parents let you ride the bus. Yeah. At, at all ages. I was riding the bus at 10. I used to ride the bus in Seattle. But yeah, yeah of course. But, but it, this was such a, I'm going to tell you right now, man, Amherst, Massachusetts in the 80s was such an idyllic place to grow up. I do remember thinking when I have kids, I hope they get to grow up like this. It was like growing up in a movie. Was it kind of like one of those, uh, remember when they were testing atomic bombs and it's like, you know, your nuclear family? Do you know what I mean? Like what it was like to be like a typical, like in that time. Was it kind of growing up like that? No, dude, it was a very, because there was five colleges. So everybody there, a lot of people there were involved in the university somewhere. So there's a lot of academia. So there's a lot of smart people, a right. lot of well-read. Um, um, and so generally well-educated um, academics keep their mind open to a lot of different things. Right. So, and instead of shouting people down, there was just a lot of discussion. And so I grew up around a lot of different groups and ethnicities and it was a pretty white town. I'm not going to say it wasn't, but it was a very not progressive in the way you think of progressive now where they're canceling people, Yeah, but progressive in the true sense of the word, which is, Hey, we're all living together and who gives a fuck what you do. Don't tell me what I should do. I'm not going to tell you what you should do. Right. But, but I, I was very aware of, because I was into the black culture. Right. It, it, when I was growing up. But I also was very aware of, of, of gay people at my school. It was not a big deal. Um, although, listen, man, the, the making fun of people was definitely more prevalent. I remember there was this kid, I'm not going to say his name, who went a little, we ended up calling him psycho. Because there, there was these dudes who were torturing this kid. And he showed up one day with a shaved head. Oof. And just whenever you would, whenever they would say something to him, they'd be like, psycho, go. And he would just start fucking nailing, nailing his head against the fucking locker. He died. But from what? Uh, maybe 10 years ago, he died. Oh, I was going to say CTE from hitting his head on that locker so many times? Could be. Good Lord. I had a lot of, it's so weird. I've had a, a, a bunch, but there was a string there where I had a bunch of people from my high school pass away. I, I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. You went to like, I think you went to something like eight funerals in like five years. It was, yeah. it was nuts. I do remember that. You went, there was a time, of, but there was also at a certain time point, like I've, since that string, I've started seeing more and more people from your past show up at our shows that yes. you are connecting with. Yes. From the high school family or people just completely from another thing, but like from your adolescence to young twenties, mid twenties, I'm seeing a lot more people show up. I'm going to tell you something that I've made a concerted effort in my life. I've gotten rid of everybody on social media that triggered me at all. Hmm. When I, I don't mean trigger in a pussy way, but trigger that where it's like brought me down a path that I didn't want to go down. Right. More. And have just thought about what's important to me. And what's important to me is being happy, doing things that make me happy and connecting with people that I love. That's what, that's what I'm down with. Right. And I have really come to understand that you know, sometimes everybody, you'll look at somebody that's in your periphery or that you used to be friends with or, and you're like, man, and you try hard to have that person in your life. Right. And it feels bad when that person rejects you. Right. And the truth of the matter is they're living their life. Yeah. And, and there are some people in your life that you do to them exactly what that person is doing to you. Yeah. And what I figured out is that that's not bad. I have to embrace the people that are on my journey, not long for the people that aren't embrace the people and things that are on my journey and find joy and happiness in that. Not be like, yeah, I know you're here for me, but what about that person? No. How awesome is it that you're here for me? Yeah. It's realizing what you have and not what you don't. Yeah, dude. So it's been pretty amazing. And the more, the longer, the more I've done that, the more people from my past have started showing up. Dude, I just talked to this, you know, I saw Gary miles again, uh, we went to that fucking tennis match with my dad and your uncle Adam. Gary Miles? You met him, my first friend. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to give me descriptions. Yeah. Because, like, I've met a lot of your people, but you got to, because you always give me, like, a story behind it. Like, I can't wait to see the rhino guy this, we're seeing the rhino guy this weekend, right? And no, dude, his, his uh, son is in a hockey tournament. Oh. 
man, fuck the kids. Come on. I want to meet the rhino guy, damn You've it. You've met the rhino guy. Well, like, yeah, but I want to like vividly remember meeting the rhino guy. Yeah. Because I don't remember when I met the rhino guy before that. Where did I meet him? Uh, long, long, if long. If you say something time. over 10 years ago, then it doesn't Yeah, way count. over. Oh, yeah. You're count. gonna meet the dude, though, that I got in the car accident with. Not this weekend. That car accident we just talked about? Yeah. In Dallas? No, but yeah. you'll meet him. He was, um, hmm, do I say this? He, he did some very interesting things for the Marines. You know, dude, he almost talked me into going into the Marine Reserves out of high school. No shit. He and shit. I... It's funny. You and I had something kind of similar then. That happened to me when I was in middle school. Remember with Steven? Steven? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he dropped that. He dropped it. Definitely. But well, I mean, I, didn't he go into the service? No. Steven? I'm almost positive. Oh, he, he did. works with his dad. He worked with his dad yeah, and yeah. went to CSUN. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm pretty sure because he was like right out of for for almost 10 years. Dude, the he dude also grew into a giant, didn't he? He and his brother. Dog. Steven's almost my height now. The, he guys, first of all, he five was, bro was so small his entire life, but extra small, dominated on the basketball court. I'm gonna tell you right now, I I do wish because he he kind of lost the love for the game. He still loves the game. He still loves playing, but like he really like I I do always wish we all the world could have seen what Stephen Rockman could have become. Oh my God. Dude. On a basketball court. Do you know what was even better than his skill? His hair. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> but his toughness. And also, bro, was a bucket. Yeah. Dude. Bucket. Absolute bucket, certified yeah. bucket. Yeah. Like, as an eight year old. Dude, Glenn listens to this. Good. Glenn. I'm going to, I'm going to clip this and, and tag Steven in it. Steven, yeah. Steve, yo, the best, possibly the best basketball team I've ever played on was a team coached by Glenn Rockland. It was me. I don't remember anybody else. I remember three players. Me, Stephen Rockland, Paige Fesky. Oh yeah, Paige, <laughs> real deal. You know she went. She played on the U.S. Olympic team, uh, and she did. And started at Pepperdine from freshman to senior year on that team. I remember yo, watching Paige play, and I was like, "Oh, she can fucking oh, straight up yeah. ball." Yo, there was and back when you're playing it that young. There's no girls in guys league. Yeah. Or at least back when I was that, yeah. there wasn't. There is now. By the way, she wouldn't have played in the girls league anyway. Uh, no. Can I be honest? Like. She gives me Caitlin Clark vibes. Like her like, handles were uh shit, dude. Yo, I wish I had again. These we were eight and nine at the time. Like, this is legitimately the best basketball team I ever played on. Paige Fesky used to put fucking dudes in highlight reels. Like, oh my God. Though, yeah, those two on the same team, there was only one season we ever got Steven and Paige on the same team. Yeah, but dude. To, to have two kids at that age who could dribble with both hands Not only was crazy. Dribble with both hands, finish with both hands, yeah, too. Crazy. And take contact. She was as tough as him, too. She's was, tougher. Yeah, it was pretty She crazy. was one of the toughest. I remember when we didn't have her on our team, and I would walk in, and I'd be like, who are we playing today? And Steven would already be warming up and not talking to people. I'm like, oh, we're playing Fesky today. And people would be like, how do you know? I go, look at Steven. Bro's yeah. locked in. We're... This is a game he loves to play, but will not tolerate losing. And he was eight. And, and I was by, like, fuck, by man. The way, like, I, I love Glenn, and I hope he's listening. <laughs> Glenn was intense as fuck. The most intense basketball coach <laughs> I've ever had. Ah, Glenn. Uh, yeah, that, that because, man. It was a whole nother level, though. Dude. Like, I loved it, though. Like, that's the. He was intense as fuck. Yeah, I will say, I liked it less when he wasn't a coach because he was screaming shit from the sideline. So uh, he knew what he was talking about, though. He did. And yeah. that's why him screaming from the side that was annoying because I'm like, he's not our coach and our coach isn't going to listen to him. But he's right. But Glenn Rockland, one of my favorite coaches I ever had. We should coach a baseball team here in Vegas. With what time? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Games are on the weekends, buckaroo. We're not here on the weekends. Yeah. You know, I started. Trust me, I, I want to coach a little league team. I started volunteering at the Nevada NPHY and the Nevada Partnership for Homeless Youth. Oh, nice. So I, you, 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 we could think of something to do with them. I'm going to teach comedy class through them, but you're happy to, if you want to come down and, and, uh, I'll just come and hang out and just do whatever. Yeah. 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 I, I really, I don't need to specialize in anything. I'll just be the roamer who just plays board games, but also shoots hoops. And then I don't know, whatever. I'll yeah. Do whatever. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've been looking like for kids. a charity, no homeless youth, is, but you're, it's mostly going to be like bigger kids. Yeah. 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 Great. I'm going to try to get one of them a job. Uh, on our Monday nights at Kimmel's. By the way, guys, if you're in Vegas on Monday nights and you're not coming to this comedy show, you're missing 
an amazing comedy <laughs> show. Yeah, absolutely. An amazing dude. That story I told about the dude in the audience the week before. Dude, the audience the week before. Yeah. Duh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, dude. That did you hear it on Monday night? Yeah, dude. That's why when we walked down the stairs, I told you you murdered. The whole the whole show. Yeah. There's one the day after my birthday, March 18th. Y'all better be there. What are we gonna do on your birthday? Can I get dressed in a fun way? Sure. I don't care. I just like I don't even know what I want to do dress wise for it. I like. I think while we're in Dallas, I want to look for like. I want to go to a. Uh, um, a hype store, not a, but like, you know, like where we find our shoes and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. I want to find like a good, I want to find like a, a real good hoodie. Like a, not Nick's, not like a crazy expensive hoodie, but one that's like a nice piece, you know, something that I can like, like a, a, up my casual wear with, like yeah. up my street wear with a little bit, you know? So I want to find one of those and Texas is going to be a bueno place to find that. Yeah. Because the culture in Texas is there. I just booked us a, a, a decent hotel for there. Sick. Um, uh, but yeah, we're going to Hell's Kitchen, 7 p.m. It'll be you, mom, me, Iman, and my buddy, Rich, Richard Murray. I know what I'm wearing. Just don't wear a dumb hat. My only request is you can't wear these two hats. You can't wear the wolf hat with the color on it. Okay, I wouldn't. And you can't wear that the, the Cam Newton hat. What? It's, a, it's not a Cam Newton hat. It's He's like the a, only dude still wearing them. It's like a Zorro hat. It's a Cam Newton hat. It's the only dude still wearing them. That's not true. I saw Jennifer Lopez wearing one. Dude. I said only dude. Okay. But, well, listen. You know, I, you know, I don't care if it men or women are wearing the clothes I'm wearing. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So what if me and J Lo are rocking this bolero hat? I don't want it. Okay, I want it. It's your, it's your <laughs> yeah, party. yeah. No, you, you can wear it the fuck you can want. Can I wear? You could show up in a tux, and I would be stoked. Can I wear a cowboy hat? Yes, not a dumb hat. Can I wear? <sighs> okay, I think I know what I'm gonna wear. Okay, let's hear it. Uh, see if I approve it. Well, don't you just want to see it? Nah, I might make some changes to it. But you know that shirt that I bought in London? The Michael Kors one? The one that I hate with the giant collar that makes you look stupid? What? You're talking about that one? The one oh, the, the, the Carl uh, Lagerfeld one. Yeah. Yeah. The one that I don't like with the giant collar that makes you look stupid? How do you know it makes me look stupid? I haven't even worn it yet. I watched you try it on. You look stupid. It, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, wear whatever you want, dude. It'll, it'll be fun. I don't care. I think it might be hilarious if everybody is dressed in like different... Well, that's not going to... Your mom's not going to let me dress in a different style than her. That's true. It's all... You know, the thing is also, I don't want to make Rich feel out of place. Because Rich isn't going to have like some nice... Not, like, like, like the button up hey, and shit like that. Guess what? Not my fucking bro. <laughs> You're an ass. Um, you know what's <laughs> funny about your mom? Your mom, I'm, I'm like, what are we wearing tonight? And she's like, you wear whatever you want. And then I'll put on what I want and she'll be like, well, you don't match me. I'm like, well, I, I don't care. And she's like, well, I do. Yeah. So, uh, Iman, Iman really doesn't care. Like our vibes most of the time clash completely. If you notice, ours do not. Nope. I'm generally wearing colors that go with her colors yes. and vibes that go with her kind of vibes. How do you feel about fur coat? Oh, I feel like we should all wear a fur coat. Have you found a white faux fur for me? No. Iman, it's an, almost impossible. Well, she has one that's half white, half black with a hood, which is pretty fire. Yeah, but that's not my style. No, it's more like Cruella DeVille. Like, it's yeah, just a cool I want a piece. white faux fur. She'll find one. She can find anything on the internet. I want a full length white faux fur or a waist faux fur fur. fur. Oh my God. I, faux fur fur? I forgot to tell you what she bought me for Valentine's Day. A black fur coat. What? How come a, I haven't seen it? A giant one. How come I haven't seen it? I haven't worn it yet. What? But dude, you better fucking rock it out. We're getting to a time of year where you're not going to be able to wear it. Yeah, that's that's okay. We'll let it sit. What's the weather this weekend in Spokane, Seattle, Missoula? You want me to look? Dude, Missoula sold out. Spokane sold out. Dude, it's funny. We were in, uh, when we were gambling, uh, we went out to Beauty and Essex again, by the way, two times in a week for Beauty and Essex, which is a record for us because I, I have never been the type of guy to go order a bunch of appetizers and just go off that. I'm the type of guy that will go spend and be like, oh, I'm going to spend a pretty buck on a steak. But I've gotten past that because also... You get more food and bang for your buck when you order 17 yeah. appetizers. Yeah. And so that's what we did. We went with Rich, uh, his boyfriend, Raul, and it was me and Iman. And we went for like a nice just friend dinner. Um, by the way, that menu is getting so fucking good. Dude, there's something there that we bought. We, we bought like probably five or six different apps at that dinner. But I told Rich and Raul, I go, there's one that I'm going to have to order one for one serving myself because I just need three of them. 
They do a Kahlua style pork belly that's shredded. Yeah. And they put it on top of a piece of cornbread with creme fraiche in the middle of it. I think I've told you about yeah, this. Yeah, I'm on board for that. Yo. Oh my God. But yeah, so we it was we did that, but then when we were gambling, there was a woman next to us. And she goes, Hey, she's like, I just like to brag for a second about my husband. And I was like, I don't care. No. But Iman was like, oh, yeah, go ahead. And I'm like, ah, she's so nice. She's so yeah. nice to everybody, so you know? Bad. And so I, I, I just turned around and kept hitting the button. And they were talking. And she starts rambling on about how her husband plays 16th in a pool tournament uh, out of 240 people. And my exact reaction in my head was, or out loud was this, cool. And then in my head, I was thinking, whoop de fucking do Basil. Like that, yeah. that scene from Austin Powers. <laughs> whoop de do Basil. Uh, yeah. By the way, that's what that's my new thing. I said whoop-de-doo, Basil. Yeah. Where people would tell me something, I'm like, whoop de do Basil. Like, <laughs> what kind of reaction you want? I might have to watch all three of those again. We should watch them this weekend on Mushrooms in Seattle. Yeah, Seattle show is Mushroom Show. Oh, Sp- no, yeah, Spokane then Seattle, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and she goes on to talk about it and she, we were like, where are you guys from? She's like, Montana. And I was like, you should come to Missoula, Montana uh, this, this Saturday doing a show. And she goes, we're third. We're 45 minutes outside of Missoula. And I was like, great. See you there. And then kept trying to end the conversation and she just kept talking. And I was like, this needs to, how do I get out of this? And it was rough. But what was I looking up again? I have no idea. Matt? Uh, <laughs> Damn it. I have no idea. Why were you looking something up? Oh, the weather. This weekend, and because we started talking about the weather, and then I got to Missoula, right, and then right. I got what to- is the weather? Hit me with Spokane, Seattle, Missoula. You want to play a guessing game? We like these games. No. Uh, oh shit! For which one? Spokane. By the way, Spokane legit may be the worst weather, and it's extreme cold and extreme hot, and extreme snow. Okay, and so extreme, extreme, extreme. As of right now, we're sunny all day Thursday. That's good. That's where we are. Uh-huh. Yeah. With a low of 23 degrees and a high of 44. Is that Celsius or Fahrenheit? Uh, Fahrenheit. <laughs> By the way, 44 degrees Celsius is like 120. Yeah, dude. Oh, okay, so I'm wearing my fur. Okay. I might. Should we match fur coats in the airport tomorrow? No. What are you scared of matching for? Well, uh, okay, we can match it up. What's, what are you, the, dude, the, the, if you wore like, a matching sweatsuit, and I did too with black fur coats, but we wore different color sweatsuits. Yeah. Those picks in the airport would go dumb. Deal. Nice. Okay. So Spokane, 41. Not excited about that. Um, uh, Seattle. Seattle never gets too cold. Was that Friday? Never gets too hot. Yeah. Cloudy. Low, 38. High, 52. So, okay. Eh, sure. Not happy about really either of those. Yeah. I, and I honestly, Missoula... I don't have any idea. How the fuck do you spell Missoula? M I S S O U L A. And when I hear Missoula, I typed in M I Z Z, and I was like, "That's not right." That's Missoula. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, okay. Cloudy on Saturday, low of twenty-five, high of fifty-two. Neither of those are really good. Actually, all three of those aren't great. But I don't think we'll need the fur during the day, except on in Spokane. But we'll need it at night skiing. Sounds like uh, you, it sounds like we're gonna. I might need it at all times. Uh, yeah. All right, well, good to know, dude. I wouldn't even have looked that up. I well, that's a bummer for you because literally, while I pack my bag every time right before I pack, I check the weather in every city we go. To. That's why sometimes you show up with like a raincoat. I'm like, what are you doing with that? You're like, it's raining all for, week, like, yeah, yeah, for fucking three straight days. And you're like, well, I got my fur, I go, can't get it wet. Well, I'm definitely not, but no rain. In Spokane, Seattle, or Missoula is win, 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 dude. Yeah, but I'm not. You know, see, you know, Washington. That doesn't stay for very long. Sometimes I'm bringing a rain jacket just in case. Would you like me to bring you a second one? Nah, I'm good. I can just pack it just to have. That's up to you. I, I don't. You're ridiculous. That's up to you. I, I, I uh, all right. So listen, um, I will tell you. Oh, by the way, have you? What have you been watching on TV? Out of care, ass. Crazy Anatomy. Yeah, <laughs> like like new current TV. Have you are you watching anything new? I mean, just besides Grey's Anatomy. Uh no, not right now. We hit strings of shows. Oh, you know what? I we just started watching literally before I came here. Something called the Octopus Octopus Murders, which I I saw that I advertised on Netflix. Good. First two episodes so far have been really interesting. There's only four episodes out right now, but it's it it's. 
a lot of information to take in because you still don't know like what they're trying to uncover. And it's really a, a, a big buildup between each episode. But there's a lot of, there was something I just heard. I'm going to tell you it. Anyways, just like, it's like a conspiracy that happened in, in the, the show U, in the U.S. Oh, okay. The show is based on a journalist who was studying what could possibly be the biggest U.S. government conspiracy of the century, and it's something that would that involved so much high, so many high end people, uh, uh, government officials in different countries, and so. But they never explained what the the what it was. They don't say what the conspiracy is. The journalist who was doing the story in the '90s was killed in a hotel in West Virginia. So how does he know? How do we know there was a conspiracy? He said to somebody, hey, I'm working on a conspiracy, but he didn't had, tell anybody what it was? He had spoken to tons of people. Those people are part of the show as well. His brother is one of the people who is being interviewed in the docuseries and has, there are tape recordings from him, from his the journalists. So what's the conspiracy? We have yet to find out yet. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Uh, but it's called the octopus murders because how the dude sketched it out, like it's like a beautiful minds room type shit, right? Yeah. All the dots connect to look like a constellation of an octopus. But there are different tentacles as in different branches as to what is happening in this conspiracy. It's fucking crazy. One of the things was, there's this guy named Earl Bryan who's tied in in so many different things in this conspiracy on all different tentacles. He's like one of the hearts of it. And there was something where there was, the Reagan campaign was involved in this money laundering thing as well. But while Reagan was running against President Carter in mm -hmm. 1980 for the presidential election, he essentially, people like to say that he stole that election from Carter. What happened was, is there were hostages at that time. Yep, yep, yep. Somewhere. I can't remember exactly. Iran. Iran, Iran right. There were documents and financial records that showed that the Reagan campaign and the U.S. government, or the Reagan campaign, had sent forty upwards of forty million dollars through the World Bank to Iran yeah. to hold to hold some strike a deal with Iran to keep the hostages there I to make Carter look bad. Yeah, I remember that. I mean, I don't remember, but I remember reading about that uh, all, recently. Three hours after Reagan was sworn in, yep. the hostages were released. Yep. Yep. It is a crazy thing to me that I'm like, okay, well, that's just like the base of it. I, I can't wait to see what else is in this. But it's like anybody who has ever tried to cover this or do more to it has been found dead. And they all try to make it look like a suicide. But none of them could possibly be a suicide in the way that they're killed. I can't wait to get into that. It's pretty good. I'm not going to lie. The first two episodes were really interesting. Um, we started the third episode right before I left. But uh, it's it was really, really cool. You know, because it's like a super certain accounts and you hear these phone calls and you hear like all these things people are trying to figure out and these constant like variables, but then also like the Reagan administration and like so much more of the U.S. government. It's like, it's. I think it's called the American Conspiracy. I think it's what it's called on Netflix. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. I'm, I'm going to check cool. that out. Super cool. I, I, you know, your mom and I watched something called the Phoenix, like a documentary. I think it was called Phoenix Lights or something. About, about this, Arizona? Like about Phoenix, Arizona? The, the, there was a, like a UFO sighting that started here in Henderson. Okay. I'm in. You know me. I um, love extraterrestrial shit. Uh, have you heard about this, man? The, the, yo, dude, where hundreds of people saw a giant craft for, go from Henderson down through to Phoenix. Giant. And so these six lights, it's, I don't know how else send, would send, send me this. Send me this. I want to watch The it. Phoenix lights? The Phoenix lights? Okay. Yeah, you just got to Google it. Oh, I, it, I, I love extraterrestrial shit. Yeah, dude. This one is kind of difficult to explain. Great. Great. I can't wait yeah. to try it. I, and I, I watched, I, we did watch some of um, Sandler's Spaceman. Oh, how is that? Um, and I also watched... Uh, or not. Uh, oh, I'm going to tell you. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> and I also watched... What the fuck was that called? Damn it. Oh, I'm watching Constellation, the series. On? Le, on Netflix. Okay. Legitsky, dude. Extraterrestrial shit as well? Fuck yeah. Gangster. I, mean, I would watch Constellation. But Spaceman, man. Look, you know Sandler... If I'm, I'm vision boarding people, the two people in this world I want to talk to more than anybody, Miley Cyrus, Adam Sandler. I've spoken two words to Adam Sandler before. I've spoken one. Oh, I beat you. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, um, I, and so like, for different reasons, 
but I have a ton of respect for both those people. And so I'm, I'm anything Sandler puts out, I'm watching. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, out of fucking pure respect for how he lives his life, how good he was to his friends, how good he Fam is to his family. He's the perfect dude. That is the, he's the perfect example of if I'm eating, my family's eating. Like if I'm rich, my family's rich. I'm gonna tell you something I, right now. I fucking love it. Much like, so you know, I wrote on, um, are you smarter than the fifth grader? I do indeed. And I remember when I got offered that gig, the money was whatever, and I was doing fine, and so it wasn't something up. I wasn't taking the gig for money, guys. It's just like, and I'm gonna tell you the truth. People ask me all every weekend, or they thank me for the my ticket prices, and I'm gonna tell you the truth. I could raise my ticket prices, but I make fine money. I'm not a greedy dude, but I don't want to price any of my fans out. Yeah, you don't want to price gouge anybody. No, I just don't want to. It's not even gouging, dude, because I'm, I would be charging what people at my level charge. Yeah. But I make enough money and I may, and I don't. You also know what it's like to be in that position though. A hundred percent know what it's like to want to go to something and not be able to afford it. That's, but I think that's the main reason you keep your tickets low. That's a hundred percent the reason. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. I, it, because it's not like I'm not struggling to feed my family and could, it, would more money be nicer. Yeah, of course, but I'm not going to do it at the cost of people who are, who, who have been, who, who are where I've been. Yeah. And, and I'm not going to make it so those people don't get to go out and enjoy a night out like everybody else. Right. Okay. And so I, why did I get into that? What was I talking about? Adam Sandler. Oh, Sandler. Thank you, man, because I didn't even know. To remember. me, Sandler, Sandler, it does things the right way. His friends who he came up with, they have lives and they can not, they have careers a lot because of him. It's not Spade because of him. But yeah. They have, but Spade has a lot of extra money because of him. Chris Rock has a lot of extra money because of him. You know what I found out though? Remember what? Remember when Sandler came on Spade Show uh, on Lights Out and they did that one-on-one -on -one interview? Yeah. By the way, my favorite episode. Dude, can I just tell you? <laughs> when you're listening to two... It's one of the reasons why I think people like this podcast. It, it's not necessarily that everything we talk about has to be heavy, and but you're talking to two people or you're listening to two people who clearly have a deep relationship, understanding for each other, and love for each other. Uh -huh. And so that's when you're listening to Sandler and Spade talk, I it, you could tell they, they're not paying attention to the audience at no, all. No, they're just having a conversation. They you also know, he, understand each other. He calls him Davey. By the way, one of my favorites, because I only know of one other person in this entire world that calls him Davey, and it's his mother. Yeah. By the way, she loves us. You know that, right? No. Oh, yo, <sighs> Mrs. Spade likes us so much. Who's us? You and me. How do you know that? Because every time she'd come onto the show, she'd be like, oh, is is that, is uh, Josh Wolf's kid here? Is Jacob here? And every time, Heather, Spade's assistant, yeah. would come ask Colleen and be like, hey, she's asking for Jacob again. Can we you spare him for like 25 or 30 minutes? And she'd be like, Jacob, no less people. I'm like, I don't even know Spade's mom. I don't know why she's asking for me. But when you were, she watched when you were on the show. Yeah. And she loved you. And then she has seen me on the show. So she just legit, Loves you and me. And so she just wanted to sit and talk. Every time That's she came. Amazing. Every time she showed up, Colleen would designate 30 minutes for me to just go sit and talk to her and just hang out. It was the best. And every time she'd talk about Spade, she would say Davey. And I'm like, it is. I was like, I really want to see if now, like, I'm obviously in the family now. Like, Spade's mother loves me. I was like, yeah. can I call him Davey? And I thought about trying it. I'm never going to try it. Hey, you can try it now. You don't work for me. <laughs> That's a great point, actually. Uh, uh, but, but, dude, watching them talk, well, I could have, I could, I could have, I was like, I hope this, I hope they do no round table and I hope it's just the two of them and it was. for the entire show. And it was fucking amazing. It was, I didn't even know why I brought that up. Why did I bring that up? I don't remember what we were talking about. We were talking about Sandler. Spaceman. That, that, and, so go back to Spaceman. Thank you so but much. But that's not even why I brought up Space Show. Let me tell you something right now Fuck about, about Spaceman. And I love him. And I'm, I'm, it's so cool to see him. Try new shit. It's a, yeah, it's sleepy, <laughs> but it's interesting, but it's slow paced. Yeah. But it's, he's so fucking good. Yeah. It's crazy. He's talented, bro. Dude, how do we manifest me getting to interview Adam Sandler? I'll tell you something right now. Wait, why did it just have to be this you? This is what why? I was talking about. Why does it just be you? Why can't it be we? So I wrote on, this is what I was going to say. I wrote on fifth grade. fifth grader. Money wasn't life changing, but I took the job. And I remember I put it in my contract. I said, I'm totally good with taking this job. 
but Foxworthy has to agree to talk to me about comedy every lunch. I re- yeah, I remember you telling me about this. And I remember he called me. He was like, is this a real demand? I was like, yep. I said, I don't care about the money, but you know more about comedy than I will ever know. So I would love to sit and pick your brain. And he said, deal. Love that. Yo, dude, right now. For how long did you work on that show? I did a, it was a syndicated season. So one syndicated season. And then I was like, that was where that but set. Had, I feel like you were there for six months. I might've been. That set was where I found out Michael Jackson died. Dude, that stage is where we shot Lights Out. No. Not that stage, but that exact, that sound studio oh, is yeah. where we shot Spade. The basketball hoop. Yeah. That's where we shot Spade. I found that picture of you with the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Hilarious. Oh, with Jack Clayman in a shirt that said, I pooted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Riz. What the fuck? <laughs> Bro, set me up for failure. But yeah, I, no, so I funny. would, right now, if Sandler was like, hey, help me write some songs. What do you want me to get? What do you want to get paid? I would say zero dollars. Yep. I just want to sit with you while you create. That was it, man. That's it. I, I like whatever he's going to pay me isn't life changing money, but be, I mean, being able, nah, life changing money. No, it's for a writing session, dude. That's not well, yeah, life changing. Sure. I guess that's not life. Yo, life. But it could tur- it could turn into a partnership that could be life changing money. A hundred percent. But that. I wouldn't need to get paid. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. I would just love to sit and watch him write songs and and talk to him about it. Yeah. I if he for me that dude is vision board shit. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I agree. Is there do you have any guys any people like that? Well, I mean, look, I would love to sit down and like listen to Sandler talk in that same aspect just because like being in now being and now pursuing comedy, right? Like those obviously the legends are the people I would love to sit and listen to and would pay no mind. Um, one of those pay no mind. Or, or no, I mean like like I would pay attention, but like oh. uh, pay attention, but I, I would never. I don't know. I wouldn't need to be paid for it. Exactly mm-hmm. what you're saying. Uh, one of those used to be David Ortiz. Check that off the list. Yeah, because I love him. He's the best. Um, I didn't know, but like Spade is one of those for me as well. Like yep. just being able to sit and listen to him talk, and and if we're either if we're just shooting the shit or talking about something, like just being in the presence, you know, has yep. always been yep. outstanding. I don't really know if I have anybody else. Um, oh, uh, probably J. Cole. No, for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not like a, a musical artist, but if he was like, yo, do you want to come sit in on a studio session? I'd be like, uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. What are we talking about? Um, probably that. Probably Cole would be the one that I would say. All right. um, just for this, the sheer fact of the utmost respect and also how much I love his music, that it would just be... I would go in there with like no phone, no wallet, leave everything and just be like, I'm, I don't need anything from this moment. I just need this experience. Sure. That's more like what I am now, honestly. Like I, I find myself when we go to concerts and stuff like I, also because Iman takes most of the videos and the photos. Uh-huh. So I, I find I don't need that responsibility or have to have that responsibility. Yeah, yeah. But I used to always feel the need to be recording something when I was at those concerts yeah. while I was younger. And now I really just like kind of. Yeah, I don't either. Just watch them. Yeah, I like so, that a lot more. Me too. Um, dude, we're through it. The hour. That was quick. Yeah, hit me. Well, uh, first and foremost, thank you guys always for staying with us and always tuning in. Uh, the newbies, the oldies, um, all you guys. We, none of us would be possible without you. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, one more time, Spokane this Thursday, Seattle this Friday, and Missoula, Montana this Saturday. Uh, ComediaJoshua.com for tour dates and tickets. I believe uh, you said Seattle is the only show that is not sold out. So that is the Friday show. That is the Mushroom Show. So you guys should sell that out because it's going to be real fun. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's going to be a good time. Oh, yeah. Um, ComedianJoshua.com for tour dates and tickets. This month is packed. April is packed. May is packed. So we got a lot, a lot of cool shows coming up. April 13th at the Gramercy Theater in New York. And May 9th, Netflix is a joke, The Bourbon Room in Hollywood. Uh, I'm going to keep reaching out to all my LA people like I have been doing. So please, y'all, come out. Come see it. Come see us. It's going to be a whole bunch of fun. Uh, I already said ComedianJoshua.com. Joshua Comedy on all platforms. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. Thank you guys for stopping by. Um, and, and yeah, I think I think that's uh, I think that's it. Do something nice for someone today. Tell them you love them. We'll see y'all next week. See you, everybody.